Hello everyone and welcome back to Classic Comics. So we're getting our first look at the Dune movie here, Denis Villeneuve's upcoming Dune film. And uh, we got an article here in Vanity Fair, which gives us our first look at uh, the images from the film, giving us an idea of you know, what we can expect visually from the movie. So I'll just start off with, uh, you know, we got this shot here of Jessica and Paul. Now, uh, you know, and if you've read the novels, then you know which part of the movie this is. So this is uh, after, uh, this comes around, uh, this will be near the end of the, the film. They're splitting this into two movies, uh, you know, a part one and a part two. And that's, I mean, that's good. Personally, I think Dune should have just been a trilogy. If you uh, read the book, it's got a pretty clear three-act structure. So I think they easily could have done three movies out of this instead of just two. But, you know, two is better than one. And anyway, yeah, this uh, here, where they're out here in the desert, this comes near the end of the movie. And, I mean, it looks good, you know. it's Visually, it's nice. Uh, of course, one thing to look at here is the still suits. Um, I mean, they're okay. Uh, one thing I find interesting is that they've gone, you know, in terms of the look, they've gone more, you know, they're kind of extrapolating more from kind of modern clothing, it look it looks like. Um, for one thing, if you see the, you know, if you can see the, uh, the gloves here, I mean, these are standard kind of, uh, I don't know what kind of gloves you call them, but I mean, like in the military, you will wear gloves like these, um. Uh, I think uh, like people who ride motorcycles, they wear they wear gloves like these, with the kind of hardened knuckles and all that. So they give it kind of a real world look, in a way. Uh, one thing I find interesting is they're kind of it seems like there are layers to it. Um, you know, because you've got kind of an undersuit, and then here you kind of see like this this part here seems to be kind of over it. You know, with the straps kind of holding it on, uh, which is um, interesting. Uh, and, I mean, it's it looks fine. Uh, I'm not blown away, but it's it's fine. I will say that uh, Timothy Chalamet, I think that's his name, I mean, he looks good as Paul. He, he fits the role well. And Rebecca Ferguson, uh, she looks good as Jessica. And, uh, obviously, the... Uh, they filmed this, I think, over in Jordan or somewhere over there, or United Arab Emirates. I think it's United Arab Emirates. But uh, obviously, I think they're filming this probably at at uh, dawn, probably. So they're kind of catching the sunset, and it looks great. You know, I mean, it's certainly filming over there in the desert will give it tremendous uh, authenticity. But uh, we're just going to kind of go over the article here. So, uh, Feuding Royals, A Deadly Planet. Before Star Wars or Game of Thrones, there was Frank Herbert's legendary sci-fi novel, uh, part two of Vanity Fair's report on Denis Villeneuve's new movie. Um, let's see. So we're going to move on here. So this is a Zendaya as Chani. And, uh, I mean, again, you know, she looks fine. I'm not blown away, but I have no real complaints. Um, now, she's a Fremen, so she's going to have the uh, the eyes of Ibad, as they're called. Uh, the glowing blue eyes. Now, it looks like she's wearing some blue contact lenses here. So, I'm guessing that, you know, there's going to be some kind of glow or extra... Uh, blue added into the eye in post, I'm imagining. Uh, Zendaya is one of the castings I, honestly, I wasn't really thrilled about. Um, the only thing I've really seen her in are the Spider-Man movies. So that's really all I have to work from. And I mean, and she's okay in there, but her character is kind of, uh, I don't know. She just comes across as kind of lackadaisical and just kind of bored, like she's bored by the world around her and boring because of it. And that's not what Chani is, but you know, she's an actress. She can probably do different stuff. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. So they were filming here in the 
Arab Emirates, Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates, where the temperatures rivaled uh, the fiction in Herbert's story. I remember going out of my room at 2 a.m., and it was probably 100 degrees, says Chalamet. Yeah, I know how that goes. I, I did a I did a tour in Iraq, <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, you'll you'll walk out in the middle of, like, at midnight, and it's, yeah, it's 100 degrees, <laughs> and you'll be out in the day, and it can be 120, uh, and, you know, and of course, we were wearing body armor, so it was like 140. They had to wear these still suits. These can't be warm. You know, these still suits they're wearing. Because obviously these aren't real still suits. They aren't really catching their sweat or anything like that. These are just some kind of thick rubber suits that they're wearing. So it's probably like wearing a scuba suit out in the middle of the desert. So I'm sure they were sweating absolute buckets in those things. They probably lost some weight. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so the shooting temperature was sometime was 120 degrees says Chalamet. Uh, they put a cap on it out there if it gets too hot. I forget what the exact number is, but you can't keep working. So in the military, once it gets up to about uh, 120 or so, you know, if you're training or something like that, they're going to stop it. Um, now, obviously, if they're out in the field in a theater, you know, overseas in the sandbox, then, you know, you do what you got to do. Okay, so then we have this shot here, and obviously this is uh, kind of the, the leadership of House Atreides here, and it's a nice looking shot. You know, one thing, again, kind of like with the still suits, they're not going like real, kind of like, you know, crazy sci-fi, like, uh, you know, Buck Rogers or a thing, and I did, I don't know why I thought they would, but I saw that Jodorowsky's Dune thing recently, and... You know, I guess I have some of that image in me. But this is more kind of along the lines of what they did in the David Lynch movie, which I like, by the way. It's 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 not a perfect movie. It's got flaws, but I, I like it. So anyway, we got uh, Oscar Isaacs as Leto here and uh, Rebecca Ferguson as Jessica. What the hell? Okay, what did I do? Ugh, give me a break. Ugh. Okay, well, hold on while I fix this. Okay, so we're back. I had to close this tab and open it up again. I don't know what I did. So, anyway, getting back to this. So, Duke Leto, uh, Jason Isaacs, fine. Rebecca Ferguson as Lady Jessica, fine. So... Uh, we got uh, Josh Brolin here as Gurney. Um, I mean, uh, uh, he's fine. Uh, he's probably not the guy I would have picked, but, uh, you know, he's fine. Uh, then, of course, we got Momoa here up front as uh, Duncan Idaho. And now uh, he looks good. Um, you know, he's kind of the one that kind of stands out here as far as the the uh, the actors. You know, he's... He's not like he's not known as being an actor's actor, right? He's more of a, you know, just kind of a, a action type guy, action hero guy. Um, but he certainly looks good here. And then, of course, we've got uh, Timothy Chalamet uh, as Paul. Uh, and then we got this gentleman. I don't know who he is, but I'm assuming this is going to be Thufer. Thufar Hawat. And then, uh, uh, now one of these guys is going to be Dr. Yui, Dr. Wellington Yui. I don't know which one it is, though. Okay. And then the, the set looks fine. Uh, you see the uh, Atreides banner back here behind them. see. So it wouldn't be Dune if it were easy. Herbert's novel became a sci-fi touchstone in the 60s, heralded for its world-building and ecological subtext, as well as its intricate, some say in a, impenetrable, plot focusing on two families struggling for supremacy over Arrakis. 
The book created ripples that many see in everything from Star Wars to Alien to Game of Thrones. Still, for decades, the novel itself has defied adaptation. In the 70s, experimental filmmaker Alejandro Jodorowsky mounted a quest to film it, but Hollywood considered the project too risky. David Lynch brought Dune to the big screen in a 1984 feature, but it was derided as an incomprehensible mess and a blight on his filmography. Not by me. I, like I say, I liked the, the 80s Dune film. It's not perfect, but I, I, I like it. It's a favorite of mine. Then in 2000, a Dune miniseries on what's now the Sci-Fi Channel became a hit for the cable network, but is now only dimly remembered. I'm not a big fan of that miniseries. I found it very blah. Uh, villain Villeneuve intends to create a Dune that has so far only existed in the imagination of readers. The key, he says, was to break the sprawling narrative in half. And as I say, I think, I think this could have been a trilogy quite easily. The film has a clear, you know, three-act structure, uh, beginning, middle, and end, and you could have done it that way, but like I say, it's two movies is better than one movie. When Dune hits theaters on December 18th, it will be only half the novel, with Warner Brothers agreeing to tell the story in two films, similar to the studio's approach with Stephen King's It and It Chapter 2. I would not agree to make this adaptation of the book with one single movie, says Villeneuve. The world is too complex. It's a world that takes power in its details. I agree with that. I agree with that. Oh, what, what are we doing? Okay. For Villeneuve, the 55-year-old story about a planet being mined to death was not merely a space adventure, but a prophecy. No matter what you believe, Earth is changing and we'll have to adapt. That's why I think that Dune, this book, was written in the 20th century. It was a distant portrait of the reality of the oil and the capitalism and the exploitation, the over-exploitation of Earth. Today, things are just worse. It's a coming-of-age story, but also a call, of, a call for action for the youth. And here we have a shot of Villeneuve uh, filming with uh, Javier Bardem as Stilgar, who's the leader of the uh, the tribe or the siege of Fremen that Paul uh, winds up joining. And again, we get a look at the still suit, although his is a bit more worn you know, and dirty, which it should be. And he looks fine. He looks good. Again, I just can't help noticing you know, that this is like, there's at least two layers to the still suits. It just seems like an awful lot. And I think for the actors wearing this out in the desert, it must have been really hot. Really hot for them. All right. So Chalamet's character, Paul, thinks he's just a boy struggling to find a place in the world, but he actually possesses the ability to change it. He has a supernatural gift to harness and unleash energy. He does. Mm, not, mm, not really. Lead others and meld with the heart of his new homeworld. Paul comes from a powerful galactic family with a name that sounds like a constellation, the House of Atreides. His father and mother, Duke Leto, by uh, Oscar Isaac, Lady Jessica, Rebecca Ferguson, take their son from their lush Scandinavian-like homeworld to preside over spice extraction on Arrakis. What follows is a clash with the criminal, politically connected House Harkonnen, led by the monstrous Baron Vladimir, Stellan Skarsgård, a mammoth with merciless appetites. The Baron, created with full-body prosthetics, is like a rhino in human form. This version of the character is less of a madman and more of a predator. As much as I deeply love the book, I felt that the Baron was flirting very often with caricature, says Villeneuve, and I tried to bring him a bit more dimension. That's why I brought in Stellan. Stellan has something in his eyes. You feel there's something thinking, thinking, thinking that has tension and is calculating inside, deep in the eyes. I can testify it can be quite frightening. I do think Stellan Scar Skarsgård is a, a good choice to play the Baron. Uh, you know, how they describe him here, it's interesting. Uh, you know, more of a predator less of a madman. Uh, I felt he was flirting with caricature. Mm, okay. I just wonder what that means. And I can't help, I mean, maybe it's just because I'm kind of so used to it now, but I can't help but wondering if when we see this, we're not going to find out that the Baron, Baron Harkonnen, is going to be the orange man. 
and Mio kind of be basically a, a kind of takeoff on the orange man. I, I just wonder. Anyway, we get some more images here. Now, this kind of perplexes me. Um, so we got Rebecca Ferguson as uh, Jessica, and that's fine. But then we've got, obviously, uh, Josh Brolin here as Gurney. And then we got another shot of them with, uh, here he is in the background, and we've got Oscar Isaacs here in the foreground. And he looks good. I mean, he looks good, but I'm just kind of puzzled about this armor. What's going on? Because in the books, if you've read the books, they don't wear armor. They have uh, force fields. They wear personal force fields. So they don't wear armor. They don't need it. And so why are they wearing armor? This kind of makes me think that they're not going to have the force fields, the personal fields, in in the movie, which is a big change. That's a significant change because in the Dune books, they don't really use... You know, the interesting thing about Dune is it's science fiction, but it's science fiction with a, out a lot of these sort of common sci-fi tropes. There's no aliens, and there's no lasers or ray guns. I mean, they exist, but they're very rarely ever used. Everybody's human, and they mainly fight with melee weapons. As you see, he's got a knife here. And here again, you know, a bladed weapon and a bladed weapon. And the reason they use these bladed weapons is because the uh, energy, you know, like laser guns, masers, phasers, whatever the heck you want to call them, fell out of favor. And they fell out of favor because they started using the personal fields. Because when beam weapons hit these personal force fields, it causes a massive explosion. So... If you're in a battle and someone's got one of these force fields on and you shoot them with a laser, you're basically committing suicide. But if they don't have the fields, you know, if they're not using the force fields and they have this armor, then the whole rationale for not using energy weapons kind of goes out the windows. So then why are you fighting with bladed weapons? Then you would have laser guns, wouldn't you? I mean, it's, I don't know, this kind of... This kind of throws me. I mean, it looks good, but if they if they get rid of the personal fields, that's a big change, and that concerns me. Now, maybe they can make it work. You know, in the David Lynch movie, uh, the House of Trades, they use these uh, sonic weapons, uh, which they call weirding modules, and those aren't in the book. In in the book, Dune, they don't have those. They made them for the movie. I, I assume they probably made them because they wanted to try and, like, create something that could be a toy. You know, like Star Wars had lightsabers and blasters. I guess. I don't know. But uh, uh, they didn't have in the book. They put them in the movie. And it worked okay. You know, it wasn't... It didn't ruin the movie or anything. But this is a much bigger change. And... Uh, I don't know. If, they, if they've gotten rid of the personal shields, that really concerns me because that makes me wonder, what else are they changing? Uh. All right. Now, uh, the director has also expanded the role of Paul's mother, Lady Jessica. She's a member of the Bene Gesserit, a sect of women who can read minds, control people with their voice, a precursor to the Jedi mind trick. Yes, it was and manipulate the balance of power in the universe. In the script, which Villeneuve wrote with Eric Roth and John Spates, she is even more fearsome than before. The studio's plot synopsis describes her as a, quote, warrior priestess. As Villeneuve jokes, it's better than space nun. Lady Jessica's duty is to deliver a savior to the universe. No. <laughs> no, that is, that's really not her duty. Her duty was to bear a daughter for the sisterhood so that that Atreides daughter could then be mated with a Harkonnen son to create a super being. That was her duty. Uh, now she has a greater role in defending and training Paul too. She's a mother. She's a concubine. She's a soldier, says Ferguson. Denis was very respectful. Uh, Denis was very respectful of Frank's work in the book, but 
The quality of the arcs for much of the women have been brought up to a new level. There were some shifts he did, and they are beautifully portrayed now. So what does this mean? What does this mean? Denis was very respectful. You're kidding me. Denis was very respectful of Frank's work in the book, but... So what, I mean, I'm still not clear on this. Denis was very respectful of Frank's work in the book, but the quality of the arcs for much of the women have been brought up to a new level. What does that mean? And again, maybe like with the Baron, maybe I'm just so used to this kind of stuff that I see it where it is, doesn't exist. But to me, what this sounds like is strong women, weak men. <laughs> That's what it sounds like to me. Strong women, weak men. There were some shifts he did. What shifts? What shifts? Uh. All right. Now, uh, here we get a shot of Momoa as Duncan Idaho. And, I, again, I mean, he looks fine. Now, you know what? If this becomes a series, you know, if Dune is a hit and they, they do this part two and it's a hit, you would think that Warner Brothers will continue the series. And if they do, this is... Landing this role is huge for Momoa because Duncan Idaho is the one character who is in every Dune book. He is in every one of them. So, you know, he could be playing Duncan Idaho for the next decade easily. If if this these movies are a hit, then him landing this role is huge, huge for his career. Uh, right now, in an intriguing change to the source material, Villeneuve has also updated Dr. Liet Kynes, the leading ecologist on Arrakis and an independent power broker amid the various warring factions. Although always depicted as a white man, oh well, we don't, we can't have that. The character is now played by Sharon Duncan Brewster of Rogue One, a black woman. What Denis had stated to me, there was a lack of female characters in his cast. And he had always been very feminist, pro-women, and wanted to write the role for a woman. Duncan Brewster says, This human being manages to basically keep the peace amongst many people. Women are very good at that. Are they really? <laughs> um, are they really? So why can't Kynes be a woman? Why shouldn't Kynes be a woman? Well, because Kynes is a man. <laughs> in the source material, Kynes is a man. That's why. Um, yeah, again, I'm not thrilled with this, but... You know, I mean... It, it's not a it's not a big deal. It's 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 a little annoying, but you know whatever. I mean, saying there there aren't there was a lack of female characters. I mean, Dune has plenty of good female characters. Uh, as fans know, uh, there's a vast menagerie of other characters populating Dune. There are humans called Mintats, augmented with computer-like minds. Augmented is not really a good way to put it. That's not really what it is. Paul is mentored by two bravado warriors. Bravado? Do they mean brave warriors? I don't know, whatever. Two warriors, Duncan Idaho and Gurney Halleck, played by Jason Momoa, Josh Brolin. Dave Bautista plays a sinister Harkonnen enforcer, Glossu Raban. And Charlotte Rampling has a key role as the Bene Gesserit Reverend Mother. I wonder who's playing Fade, Fade Ratha. I really haven't heard that. And the list goes on. In the seeming unlivable wilds of Arrakis, Javier Bardem leads the Fremen tribe as Stilgar, and Zendaya co-stars as a mystery woman named Chani, who hunts Paul in his dreams with a vision, as a vision with glowing blue eyes. The breadth of Dune is what made it so confounding for others to adapt. It's a book that tackles politics, religion, ecology, spirituality with a lot of characters, says Villeneuve. I think that's why it's so difficult. Honestly, it's by far the most difficult thing I've done in my life, or done in my life. After finishing the first movie, he'll just have to do it all over again. And then, of course, we have this, I'll take a look at this right quick. There was this other image of Paul that we got yesterday. Um, and again, and this is, uh, this is clearly, uh, get, will you go away? All right, whatever. They have a spring sale. They have a spring sale. Yay, wonderful. So uh, this is obviously on Caladan, early in the movie before the Atre House Atreides moves to Arrakis. I don't know where it's shot, but I mean, it looks good. You see some ships in this sky there. 
Again, it's a nice image. It looks good, but it doesn't really tell us much. So, I mean, overall, I mean, everything looks good, you know, but Denis Villeneuve, he's a good filmmaker. I've seen, I've seen Arrival, and I've seen, uh, what, Blade Runner 2049. Look, and they were both really good. I like them both. Uh, They were both well-directed. They both visually looked really good. So I have no doubt this is going to be a well-made film. But again, maybe I'm just... Maybe it's just because I've (laughs) experienced this stuff so much in the last few years. But nowadays, just the slightest little thing set me off. You know, uh, beefing up the female characters. Okay, what does that mean? You know, uh, you know the women have been brought up to a new level. Okay, maybe there were some shifts he did. Okay, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, but for now, I mean, visually it does look good. I got to give it that. So, uh, how about you? Uh, what is your opinion on this? Have you seen the David Lynch movie? Did you like that? Uh, do you think this will be better? Uh, do you think this movie will be woke? Because I'm, I'm kind of starting to worry. I'm, th- I'm thinking we might get Woon. This isn't going to be Dune. It's going to be Woon. Woke Dune, maybe. Anyway, uh, let me know in the comments. And if you like this content, please uh, hit the like button. And please subscribe to the channel before you leave. And hit the bell for notifications of more videos. And I'll see you all next time. Thanks for watching.